when you have two parallel lines, okay, so these don't cross, they keep going like that, cut by a third line, they call it a transversal, it transverses or cuts across those two lines, you can see that there's eight angles that are formed. Now let's go over the different types of angles. So corresponding angles, what corresponding angles means is that if you were to take this X, see how it forms like an X there, and pick it up and place it on this X down here, the angles that match up or correspond, they're gonna be congruent, they're gonna be equal to each other. So angle two is gonna correspond with angle six. You can think of it as the upper right hand corner matches up with the upper right hand corner. Upper left, upper left, lower left, lower left, lower right, lower right. So those are called corresponding angles and they're congruent, which means that they're gonna be equal. Now the next one, alternate interior angles. Interior means they're in between, they're on the inside of these two parallel lines, right? Alternate means one's on the left, one's on the right. So three and six are gonna be alternate interior angles, four and five are alternate interior angles, and they're congruent, which means that these are equal to each other and these are equal to each other. So if you think about the name and what the name represents, that'll help you to figure out which angles you're working with. Okay, so alternate exterior angles. Exterior, these are the ones that are on the outside. They're not in between the parallel lines, they're on the outside, the exterior. Alternate means one's on the left, one's on the right. So one and eight are alternate exterior, two and seven are alternate exterior, and those are gonna be congruent uh, to each other. These are congruent and these are congruent. Okay, now consecutive interior, okay, this one's a little bit different. This is where students sometimes get a little bit confused because up to this point, we've been talking about angles that are congruent or equal, right? But consecutive interior, consecutive means like one after another. Interior means they're in between the lines, right? These angles actually are supplementary. They add up to 180, okay? So, spoiler alert, right? So three and five, those add up to 180. Four and six, those add up to 180. Doesn't mean that they're both 90. This could be you know, 120, this could be a 60, but they're gonna add up to 180. All the other ones that we've talked about so far, even including this last one, vertical angles, those, those are congruent to each other. So vertical is like when you see two lines, they form an X, they cross each other, okay, like this. The ones that are across from each other are gonna be equal. So one and four are equal, two and three are equal, those are vertical. Six and seven, five and eight. So whenever you see two lines cross like in an X like that, the ones that cross from each other are equal, those are vertical. Now, you don't have to have two parallel lines cut by a transversal to have corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and so on. And I'll show you that in this next diagram here. So see if you can, work along with me here and see if you can beat me to the punchline here, okay, with finding out what these angles are called. So notice we've got four lines here, right, okay, and let's just see if we can find some corresponding angles, okay. Now remember what we talked about with corresponding angles, if I was to take this X, pick it up, place it on top of this X, you're going to see that angle one is going to match up with angle five. Now because these two lines are not parallel, angle one and angle five are not gonna be congruent to each other. They're still called corresponding angles though. So that's an important uh, thing to distinguish. If the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. If the lines are not parallel, they're not congruent. But again, still called corresponding angles. Two and six, three and seven, four and eight. Now I'll just give you a half a second here. Can you see any other corresponding angle pairs? Okay, two angles that are corresponding. Well, you could do the same thing with this X here and this X here, right? So 9 and 13, 10 and 14, and so on. You could do that with this X and this X, right? You could do that with this X and this X. But what we can't do is we can't take this X here and place it on top of this X here. Okay, do you see the difference? These angles are not corresponding with these angles. So what you have is you have two lines cut by a transversal, okay? Now if you were to take this whole diagram and rotate it, same thing, you have these two lines cut by this transversal. These are the eight angles that we're working with, okay, in terms of the corresponding angles. Let's look at alternate interior angles. Can you see a pair of alternate interior angles in this diagram? Well, you can see three and six. So you have these two lines, they're in between. One's on the left, one's on the right, alternate interior. Four and five, right? Now again, they're not gonna be congruent like we talked about in this diagram because the lines aren't parallel, but they're still called alternate interior. Same thing over here, if you kind of tilt your head or rotate the diagram or turn your computer, you'll be able to see that two and 11, four and nine, those are also alternate interior. You can say 12 and 13, 11 and 14, alternate interior. And you can keep going through the diagram like that uh, for all the other different uh, types of angles we talked about up, up here.
But let's look at this next example here. In this example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to find out what X is in this diagram. Now, I just wanna point out, when you see these little arrows like that, okay, not necessarily at the end of the line, but like you know somewhere in between the two ends of the line, this indicates that the lines are parallel. See these arrows right here? So what we have is L and M are parallel, and they're cut by this transversal and this transversal P, right? So what's the connection between this angle 4X and this angle 120? If you guessed alternate exterior angles, you're right. And what do we know about alternate exterior angles? They're congruent. So all we have to do is set 4X equal to 120, and we can solve for X. So that comes out to 30, right? So 4X equals 120, X is 30. Over here, what's the connection between this angle and this angle? Okay, well, if you guessed alternate interior angles, you're right. And these angles are congruent, so you just have to set them equal to each other. So 3x plus 2 equals 110, and you can solve for x. So I hope you learned something in this video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in some of the future videos, and I'll talk to you soon.